morning once again. You know, uh, my wife packed the, the little items that we gave to the band and we left somebody out. So we're going to recognize him right now in the middle of everybody, and that's Ron Townley. He takes care of that music back to back. No, he's one of those guys that slides under the radar here, and he's always here to take care of business, so we appreciate that so much. You know, I like all the excitement in the air right now. Everybody kind of gets fired up right before the holidays, and you start to see those uh, smiles on their faces, and you can just tell excitement's in the air because of Jesus Christ. The prayer is that we continue that excitement for Him all through the year. Amen? Well, I thought I'd start this morning by reading you some letters to Santa from some kids that I found exciting. First one says, Dear Santa Claus, when you come to my house, there will be cookies for you. But if you are real hungry, you can use our phone and order pizza to go. <laughs> Second one, Dear Santa, I want a puppy. I want a playhouse. I've been good most of the time. But sometimes I'm wild. <laughs> Dear Santa, I'm not going to ask for a lot. Here's my list. The Etch-A-Sketch Antimator, two packs of number two pencils, Crayola fat markers, and the big gift, my own color TV. Well, maybe you could drop the pencils. I don't want to be really selfish. <laughs> and my favorite. Dear Santa, this from a four-year-old. I'll take anything because I haven't been all that good. <laughs> Open your Bibles with me this morning. We're going to Luke. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. So it says, So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to, to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them, and there were shepherds living out in the, the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about it, this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. At this time that the baby Jesus came to this earth, a birth announcement went out like no other. Like no other in its time. With angels as messengers, a bright light and glory he let those particular words out to the shepherds. 
You know, we might think that heaven would uh, be all excited and break forth in shouts of praise for the whole world to hear. That it wouldn't be just brought to the shepherds at that time, but it would be brought to the whole world all at one time in a manner nobody else could even fathom. But it didn't happen that way. You know, this was a new and exciting time. The child would change the world. Amen. If you recall, several years ago, when Princess Diana delivered Prince William, it was in all the headlines, it was blasted all over the world, all the politicians, all the presidents, all the, all the head powers of the world, it was announced to them and brought to them in a way that they were invited to attend certain events celebrating the birth of Prince William. Heads of state, political players, presidents, governors, and senators, senators were all invited to this event, and the announcement came to them. It certainly wasn't personally announced to a bunch of truck drivers and a bunch of cowboys herding cattle out on a ranch somewhere. They left them out. No, it didn't come to them but it came to who was important in their eyes. Here's where the twist comes in. How God's birth announcement was truly revealed. Think about this. This was the biggest event in human history. Biggest event in human history. The mayor of Bethlehem, he doesn't get an announcement. The high priest in Jerusalem, He's left out of the loop completely. Caesar and the members of his royal court, they don't even get the news. None of the officials, none of the power elite get the announcement. The palace do doesn't hear. The temple doesn't hear. And Jerusalem doesn't hear. The birth announcement that God gives out goes to a group of sheep herders outside of Bethlehem. Sheep herders, and think about this. Sheep herders then were considered very, very low on the totem pole. They were outcast. They were looked down upon. But by announcing it this way, we ask why. Why the shepherds? Why waste it on shepherds? Well, by announcing the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, it seems that God intentionally provides a glimpse into the nature of Jesus' ministry and his life. Because if you remember right, Jesus was called the Good Shepherd. Amen? God seeks out and uses people that are always overlooked, discarded, and counted out. God always uses the weakest to create the strongest. And he did in this case also. By appearing to the shepherds, it shows Jesus' ministry and his connection with shepherding of his life and his ministry. If you remember right, many of the great leaders in the Bible were connected to shepherding. Moses and David were once shepherds. Exodus 3, if you want to go there with me, verse 1. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horbid, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. So, God's calling him as a shepherd to lead his people out of Egypt. Simple shepherd. Psalm 78, 70 if you want to go there. He chose his servant David, calling him from the sheep pens. He took David from tending the ewes and lambs and made him the shepherd of Jacob's descendants, God's own people, Israel. 
he used two, two men that were shepherds. So you want to know why the announcement went to the shepherds? Because that's what Jesus' life and his ministry is all about, shepherding others. What a fitting way to do that. God in the past had raised up shepherds to lead Israel and provide them with a greater knowledge of God. It's been done over and over again in the Bible. Now in that same tradition, the master shepherd of Israel had just been born. The prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of the Savior of Israel and would be a shepherd to God's people. He described this in the Messiah in Isaiah 40, 11. Chapter 40, verse 11. And he, he described him in this way. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. Once again, Jesus himself called himself the good shepherd. If you would, turn with me over to John. John chapter 10, begin at verse 11. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock and it scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. Sheep herding was really hard work. It's, it really wasn't easy. They never had a day off. Shepherds never had the day off from herding sheep. The sheep needed constant attention and care. Constant. They could not be left alone. They couldn't be left alone, not for a moment, because trouble would always find them. They would always get themselves into some kind of trouble when they were left alone. And shepherds, they were committed to their sheep, completely committed to their sheep. Sheep are sometimes just dumb. People will just tell you that sheep are just sometimes dumb. Sheep are known to eat themselves sick if they remain in one spot too long. Eat themselves sick. That's a good one. Sheep don't foresee yet danger, and the reason they don't see, foresee danger is because sheep, follow the, the, sheep will follow the one in front of them. And wherever they go, not even looking up, just following the sheep that's in front of them, they never look up. And that makes them an easy target for some kind of harm to come to them. Sounds a lot like people, doesn't it, sometimes? People can be a lot like sheep. People need constant care. From God, amen. And we know that in Deuteronomy 31, God tells us, the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So that pretty well tells us that God's always there and that we always need constant care from God, amen. So why would we look at it any other way? The shepherd on the hills of Bethlehem that first Christmas, received that news. Christ, the Lord is born. Remember those shepherds. They were outcast. They were overlooked. Ousted, belittled, and looked down upon by many people, especially, especially religious leaders and kings. They were looked down upon by the religious establishment. They were beginning to feel like they weren't good enough for God. I know there are people here today that feel like you're not good enough for God. Well, if you brought that feeling in, 
and you give it to God and you leave it here before you walk back out that door because that's not so. This Christmas, I hope you understand your true value to God. You're not damaged goods. Your life is not hopeless. And you are worth much more because you are a child of God. It's easy for people and Satan to convince you that you're not worth anything. But think about this. God uses the, the humble, the outcasts, the people that think they can't be used in all types of situations to better this world and to bring hope that it's not about politicians, it's not about kings, it's not about governors, senators, it's not about the elite, it's about the humble that humbles themselves for one another and humbles yourself for God. You don't need to be from royalty. You don't need to be a political figure or a member of any religious establishment for God to be able to use you. Everyone sitting here today, God's ready to use you. The key is listening to God. Being obedient to God. Following His direction, walking with Him, letting Him lead. Get out of His way. Life can be so much better. If you have a troubled life right now, you have problems going on, you think the world's about to crash in on you, then God's the answer. You say, well, I, everybody tells me that, everybody says that, but I don't get that. God doesn't just want you to know Him. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants to talk to you every day, every minute of every day. He wants you serving Him Working for Him, not working for whoever you're employed by, not working for your family, not working. He wants you working for Him. Because if you're working for Him, you're working for everybody. Amen? So get all that stuff out of the way. And understand, God is number one, first in your life. Can I get a witness on that? Anybody else agree with me? Here's the deal. My life changed the day I started following God, and I... Buried my, my whole life into God Himself. Do I have problems pop up in my life? Absolutely. Every day something pops up. It's always, that's life. But it's how I deal with the problem and how I look at the problem and how I go to God and say, it's not my problem because you're going to take care of it. Amen? Give it to God. Get out of the way. I don't care where you are in your life. I don't care how low you think you are. And especially if you think you're not worth anything, the Bible doesn't tell me that and it won't tell you that. You are a child of God and you are worth much. Amen? Everything that goes on in your life, no matter how bad it is, no matter what problem it was, people will find themselves not wanting to forgive you for something you did. But God always forgives when you come to Him. So why would we care? Why would we care what everybody else thinks and what goes on in our life? Why would we care as long as we know it's approved by God? Amen? Preach it, right, brother? Preach it, buddy. You bet. You know what? I'm going to close reading you a story that really touched my heart. And I think it's a good way for us to look at how sometimes we do look at things wrong and we do have people that look down on other people and how people treat other people. It shouldn't just be this treatment that you care about somebody or you have compassion for somebody just at Christmas. It should be year-round. Let me get the right pages here and we'll. I'll even try to get through this without some tears myself, to be honest with you. 
This is a story about a woman who was shamed and brought closer to God by someone the world would overlook. It says, we were, only, we were the only family in, with children in the restaurant. I sat Eric in my high chair and noticed everyone was quietly eating and talking. Suddenly, Eric squealed with glee and said, hi there. He wiggled and giggled with merriment at a man with a tattered rag of a coat, dirty, greasy, and worn. His pants were baggy with a zipper at half-mast, and his toes poked through his would-be shoes. His shirt was dirty, and his hair was uncombed and unwashed. His whiskers were not quite a beard, and his face was rough. We were too far to smell him, but I'm sure he smelled. His hands waved at my baby. Hi there, baby. Hi there, big boy. I see you, Buster, the man said to Eric. My husband and I didn't know what to do. Eric continued to laugh and answer. Hi. Hi there. Our meal finally came, and the drunken geezer began shouting across the room. Do you know Patty Cake? Do you know Peekaboo? Hey, look, he knows Peekaboo. No one thought the old man was cute. My husband and I were embarrassed. Eric, on the other hand, was running through his repertoire of tricks, all of which were admired by the bum. We finally got through the mill. My husband went to pay. Eric and I headed for the door. The old man was poised between me and the door. I uttered a prayer. Lord, let me out of here before he speaks to me or Eric. As I drew close to the man, I turned my back trying to sidestep him and avoid any air he might be breathing. As I did, Eric leaned over my arm, reaching with both arms in a baby's pick-me-up position. Before I could stop him, Eric had propelled himself from my arms to the man's. Eric, in an act of total trust, love, and submission, laid his tiny head upon the man's ragged shoulder. The man's eyes closed, and I saw a tear hover beneath his lashes. His aged hands, full of grime, pain, and hard labor, gently, so gently, cradled my baby's bottom and stroked his back. The old man rocked back and cradled Eric in his arms for a moment, and then his eyes opened and set squarely on mine. He said in a firm, commanding voice, You take care of this baby. Somehow, I managed to say, I will, from a throat that contained a stone. I received my baby, and the man said, God bless you, ma'am. You've given me my very best Christmas gift. I ran to the car. My husband wondered why I was crying and saying, My God, my God, forgive me. The ragged old man unwittingly had reminded me to enter the kingdom of God, we must become little children. Amen. I have no idea where I'm at. I got into the story. Can you relate to the shepherds? Overlooked, looked at with suspicion, led to believe they were not worthy of God's love. Here's the real message for you. For all of us, a Savior was born. Christ the Lord. Sent to be born. Sent to die. So we would have eternal life when we leave this place. No matter where you're at in your life, no matter what's going on with you at this time, I pray that you don't reject Jesus. Embrace it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the blessings you continue to just continue to pour out here at uh, your church house. Father, we thank you for each and every one here today that, that they took the time to come spend this time with you, worshiping you. Father, we thank you for the hearts of everyone here. Father, we thank you that you love and you show grace and mercy upon us when we do fall down. 
And Father, we thank you that you would use sinners like us, the meek, the ones that just think their life's not worth anything anymore. Father, we thank you that you look down upon them and that you use them in a mighty way. Father, we thank you that that you just come and sent your son to be born for us and to die on that cross that covered our sins and our shortcomings. But Father, I pray today that everyone here that hears my voice, that they would come to know you better and deeper and that they would be a servant of you. And Father God, just like the shepherds, that they would go and spread the news of how great your son is. Father, be with each and every one as they go forth in this holiday season and at this Christmas time, Father, that you would wrap your arms around each and every one of them, fill their homes and their lives with your presence. And Father, I pray today that everything we did, everything we said, was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.